Okay, good afternoon. So I'm uh, Erwin Bargon. I'm from the LTM uh, CNRS. And this presentation will be a common uh, work uh, with uh, CLET, uh, with Quentin Villemar sitting next to me. And uh, this presentation will be divided into two parts. In the first part, uh, I will discuss how hydrogen annealing treatment uh, can help to fabricate ultra-low-loss silicon wave guides. And in the second part, Quentin Villemar from CLET will show you how this treatment can be introduced in the fabrication process of the silicon platform and boost its performance. So silicon photonics is a prominent technology for a wide range of applications. Uh, at Leti, originally, the silicon photonics was developed for high-speed interconnects for optical communications, but now Leti's silicon photonics platform is ready to address other challenges relating to three-dimension sensing, such as LiDAR technology, or neuromorphic photonics, and even quantum photonics. But for all the seated applications, ultra-low-loss waveguides are highly desired, and especially in the case of uh, quantum photonics, since it has been demonstrated that the silicon resonator are an efficient source of a quantum state of light, but provided that the extremely low loss are, are get. So in a silicon platform, the silicon waveguides are elaborated in the silicon material of the silicon uh, on insulator substrate. And this high index contrast between the silicon and the silicon dioxides offer this tight confinement of light that means that uh, the light can be rooted in the very small waveguides and tight bands. And this means that we can fabricate dense and compact uh, optical components and this with a small footprint. But unfortunately, this uh, high index between silicon and silicon dioxides also leads to significant scattering losses, which compromise the silicon platform performance. So um, those uh, scattering loss are due to the cyber roughness uh, of the silicon waveguide after the pla plasma patterning and typical values that can get after plasma etching using a conventional 248 nanometer lithography is about 2.5 nanometer. And this can lead to loss of far above 2 dB per centimeter, uh, which is not acceptable. So a question is how to improve this roughness starting from this. So uh, 20 years ago, Sato and Al demonstrate that by applying a nitrogen annealing treatment, it was possible to completely smooth a silicon surface. So we have used this method and applied it uh, to pattern silicon wet guide. The experiments were performed uh, in an epitaxy chamber in which a high flow of hydrogen circulates and um, uh, the pressure in the chamber in, is maintained in the tall range, and the wafer can be heated by lamps, several lamps, allowing to reach temperature as high as uh, 1,100 degrees Celsius. So we have first evaluated this treatment on strip waveguides. Here are uh, the conditions are uh, 850 degrees Celsius and the pressure of 20 tor. And you can observe the, the impact of this treatment on the profile roughness and optical losses. So on your left, left you have uh, the same images showing how the profile evolved uh, under such a treatment. You can see that we obtain kind of reflow profile with a rounded corner and swell profile. But in final, the volume is preserved as well as the width at the middle. Concerning the roughness, we have evaluated it uh, by using AFM technique, and we can scan directly the sidewalls and like this estimate the roughness before and after the annealing treatment. And you can clearly observe that there is a significant line with rough, line edge roughness decrease after such a treatment, allowing to reach an atomic scale smoothening. And on the right, you can see the optical losses that have been measured at 1.3 micron for waveguides with and without this annealing treatment. And those measurements have been performed on the several waveguides with different widths ranging from 300 to 800 nanometer. 
And you can clearly observe that for all waveguide CD, we can get a very uh, good improvement of the loss, uh, reaching um, even record loss for um, of 1.1 uh, dB per centimeter for uh, 350 by 350 cross section waveguide. However, if we apply such treatment on reef waveguides using the similar condition that I've shown before, you see that this time uh, there is a significant impact on the profile. The reef shows uh, severe uh, profile deformation, especially at the bottom uh, where we can clearly observe a, a big CD increase. And this is because there is no more silicon oxide interface to limit the silicon reflow. And regarding the roughness, you can observe that this significant reflow is also accompanied by a significant roughness decrease, much more pronounced than in the case of the streak. And the consequence is that we can really decrease of about 70% uh, the optical loss for all the waveguide CD that we have uh, on, on our wafer, reaching 0 0.5 dB per centimeter. However, this profile deformation is an issue and can uh, compromise some performance for some other optical passive devices present on the wafer. So we have to find a compromise between profile deformation and a loss decrease. So we have tried to optimize this annealing treatment on rib structure and we have first evaluated the impact of temperature. And you can observe here uh, that by decreasing the temperature, we can indeed improve the profile and uh, have a better control of the dimension at the bottom, since now uh, the increase is only of 40 nanometer, which is completely acceptable. Uh, however, uh, it was um, <coughs> it is also consistent that with such condition, the roughness is higher, and then the loss decrease is lower, but we still get uh, some acceptable loss with this condition for the rib structure of about 0 0.6 dB per centimeter. Unfortunately, such uh, treatment at low temperature uh, do not provide uh, good losses in strip since uh, 1.8 dB per centimeter was measured. So another way to, uh, up, to get a good compromise be to increase the pressure. So this is what we have looked at. And you have here the profile of the waveguide after this uh, treatment using higher temperature. So we can indeed limit the reflow, but what was surprising is that we could also lower the roughness and it leads also to lower loss. And in this case, we could obtain 0 0.35 uh, dB per centimeter loss for the rib structure. And uh, what was uh, good news uh, was that uh, the loss for the strip was also maintained to a low value. So operating at a high pressure is quite a good compromise to get the rib profile uh, to limit the pro rib profile deformation and also to get a satisfying loss uh, for rib and strip architecture. So now Quentin will uh, show you how this treatment could be implemented in a mature photonic platform. <laughs> 